post graduates so let us make it a interactive session so without wasting more time i'll start sharing so i'll be talking about lateral condyle fractures the late presentation in children and most of the cases i'll be showing here are taken from dr john mukhopadhyay sir so lateral condyle fractures they account for uh, 10 to 20% of the pediatric elbow fractures overall the fresh injuries and of these the non union they account for 1.6% neglected fractures are those which actually present greater than 3 weeks after the initial injury a uh, natural course of a lateral condyle fracture in children is like if uh, a child uh, has a fresh injury a fracture to the lateral condyle if for some re reason he doesn't take treatment or whatever was the course of the treatment if it has gone for non union the patient gradually becomes asymptomatic and he attains good range of movement and that is why the presentation for these non unions are so varied that uh, it is presenting like a near normal elbow and then ranging to very severe disabilities if these patients do not take some kind of treatment over a, a course of time so uh, there are some common causes of non union uh, which are seen in lateral condyle of which anatomical causes are like because it is a uh, Uh, the intra articular fluid it extra vacates the uh, fracture so it doesn't allow it to unite there is a constant pull by soft tissue uh, by the elbow extensors and it doesn't let it to stay in position and so leading to non union there might be an impaired blood supply which is most of the blood supply in the lateral condyle is from the posterior aspect of the uh, the fracture area or the lateral condyle itself there might be surgeon based fractures like Uh, initially the fracture was missed by the surgeon or there was a fixation which was not done up to the mark so we will be dealing with all of these things in our subsequent cases so once there is a uh, established non union and in a, a prolonged period maybe uh, some months to years it might lead to elbow instability it might need lead to the deformity that is cubitus valgus and also along with one or more of these there might be a tardy ulnar nerve palsy now there are various treatment options which are available uh, till date to manage a non union or a delayed union of lateral condyle fractures which are like conservative not to do anything or in situ fixation open a close reduction and uh, may or may not be along with other procedures anterior transposition of the ulnar nerve and corrective osteotomy but the problem is being so many treatment options we there are many literature and papers available which does not give a clear cut algorithm as what should be done in a particular case and that is what we are going to discuss from our cases and come to the recommendation at, as what should be done uh, the complication of the late surgery as such is that uh, there might be a blood uh, damage to the blood supply of the lateral condyle fragment leading to avn and there might be increased stiffness after the surgery so uh, for the pgs just for the sake of them i just uh, want to stimulate that if when a, there is a fresh injury of the lateral condyle fracture uh, the basic x ray is needed apart from the ap and lateral view is an internal oblique view which is a very important x ray uh, of the x ray uh, of the elbow and uh, along with that uh, an x ray of the opposite normal side is also needed the normal recommendation in a fresh injury is like an undisplaced or up to 2 mm of uh, displacement a conservative treatment is usually advocated with a serial x rays of uh, weekly radiographs and usually uh, near about 6 weeks of immobilization is ad uh, advised and if there is a, a displacement of greater than 2 mm a closer and or an open reduction is needed and uh, the implant whatever i mean the kvr if they are put there has to be there for uh, the immobilization should be there for near about 6 weeks before uh, the fracture is consolidated so uh, this is the uh, classification systems which are used most commonly the the one on the left side is milch classification 
it is type 1 and type 2 so type 1 is a more lateral kind of uh, uh, the fracture pattern which starts from the uh, lateral condyle and going into the capitulotrochlear groove the type 2 is more medially going to the uh, the trochlear sulcus so uh, this is most commonly used this is milch classification type 1 and 2 the other classification is by song, which is a little more difficult. It is like type 1, A, B, C, D, E, up to five types. And it is progressively uh, increasing from uh, the physical injuries type 1, 2, 3, up to C. And then uh, D is complete injury and E is like the fragment is rotated. Uh, also, uh, more commonly used is Jacob type 1, 2, 3, which simply says that type 1, the fracture is there, but a medial hinge is intact. In type 2, the hinge is broken. And in type 3, the fragment is kind of completely rotated. So, uh, again, for the postgraduates, uh, if a patient comes with a fresh injury, if it is undisplaced, uh, we'll get uh, weekly x rays done, we'll give a, a slab or a immobilization and uh, up to six weeks, uh, we need to immobilize the fracture, up after which uh, the, we feel the union is there, we'll start the mobilization. This patient, like this is a 10-year-old patient with a fresh injury, there as, uh, appears to be a displaced fracture. So we took him to the OT. In this patient, we wanted to put a dye and uh, we found that the joint was congruent with some kind of uh, little push towards compression towards a fragment. This is a fresh injury. Uh, and then we uh, stabilize with the wire and a screw. So coming to the, as such, the cases of uh, non-union or delayed union, which now is going to be an interactive session. So I think uh, Sudhanshu, you are there, right? Please uh, unmute yourself. Yes, sir, I'm yes, there. Sir. Sir. Okay, right. So this is the first patient. He is a 10-year-old male. And uh, he has an injury to the left side. And he presented to us at one month after the initial injury. And uh, the range of movement was uh, pretty good, 0 to 100 degrees. And if uh, we are able to classify, this looks like a Milch type 1 and a Jacob type 1, if you have heard the classification. So uh, from the x-rays, uh, can you say what would be your management now? Looking at the x-ray of the left side, the injury on the left side. Sudanshu. Sir, it's in an undisplaced fracture, sir. Okay, and relatively undisplaced, right? Uh, yes, sir, but there is a gap of uh, approx 1 mm. So, uh, K wire fixation, sir, for the approximation of the bone uh, to the bone to bone and slab, sir. Slab, uh, cast, sir. With so, cast. you want to fix it uh, and with a couple of screws or wires and then give some kind of immobilization. Okay, yes, right. Sir. So, uh, let's see what we did. We did almost the same thing. We uh, compressed the fracture uh, with the close reduction only it came. And there are the couple of uh, wires, three wires, one horizontal, two going oblique. And that is a lateral view. It looked good. And that is at five months follow up with a good range of movement at five months. So, uh, John, sir, any expert opinion on this, sir? So you, you said we compressed it. How do we compress it? I mean, just I had just to push uh, with the, so with the digital. This is in situ. We haven't in situ, right. Reduction. Yeah, not an open reduction, not an open yeah, so fixation. Nowadays, uh, the treatment for minimally displaced fractures, when they present even up to three to four months, uh, you would do a fixation in situ. That means uh, there's been some, there's now literature on it to show that this works just as well as open reduction and internal fixation. It doesn't involve the dissection of the fragment. Right. So the chances of AVN, et cetera, are less. So you would go ahead and just fix it and then get them to mobilize the elbow. Obviously, in this case, we leave the k wires in so that we are not in a rush to take the k wires out. When we put the k wires sticking out, then there's always this problem of how long do you keep the k wires because children... Uh, will be wanting to get their arm movement moving. And uh, the longer the K-wires are there, the risk of infection, et cetera, increases if they're sticking out of the skin. So where, where we are dealing with non-unions, we tend to bury the K-wires so that there's no rush to take them out. It does mean another surgery to take them out later. Right. 
And this is an early follow-up. Uh, I think we need a longer follow-up to really look at the range of motion. Right. So uh, this is how we'll be discussing other cases for all the DNB and PGs here. So any question from till here now, Sudanshu and, uh, and anyone else who is whoever is here. So from this, yeah. yeah. Any question, Janki? Amil is as unmuted, so maybe he's no, having no question. Okay. Okay. okay, so the conclusion from this case, the first case is that even after a presentation at one month, this looked to be a relatively undisplaced fracture, uh, minimally displaced. So as Sir said, this is in situ fixed and the KYS have to be left inside the skin with a secondary procedure taking out at once the fracture is completely healed. Yeah, one question so, which usually asked uh, during like OSCE about the age of the elbow, which is quite common. So, uh, although it is written here, how to determine that one, if you can explain that one, sir. So, uh, I have not put a slide about that. So, the uh, mnemonic for that is C-R-I-T-O-E. So, if any any of the postgraduates know that, what is cry to a Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me. Sir, ossification, appearance of ossification center. Yeah. In, in elbow. It is the cri capitolum at one year. Trochidia at three years. Uh, I said internal yeah, medial epicondyle is five years. A gulbia yeah. which means? Yes, sir. What was the second one? R, no? R is so, radi sorry, so radial head, sir. Radial head was, sir, three years. Uh, CRI. I say internal, yeah, medial epicondyle, five years, sir. <laughs> okay. T for trochidia for, sir, seven years. Yeah. O says, sir, Ole Kernon, nine years. And sir, last right. is lateral epicondyle, 11 years. Right. So the the ossification of the Ole Kernon is seen there. So it is near uh, nine years somewhere. So some people also add one year to that. So that is like whatever you started from yes. one year might Maybe be two, two years, four year. years. And, you know, like, right. It's easier to remember. Yes. So I hope that is clear. We'll move no, ahead sir. to the next case. No, sir. Okay. So the this is a second patient who presented uh, to us. He's a five-year-old with an injury to the right side with a delay of five months at presentation. The Initially, the movement was a bit restricted. And so, Amil, uh, your take. Sir, you want... I will not so this... fix it, sir. Okay, ju just wait, wait. Okay, so this is an X-ray at the initial injury. So would you ask for something else? Sir, internal oblique view. I mean, this, these were the initial x-rays, okay? So yes. those were the subsequent x-rays where treatment in a uh, immobilization was taken, yes, which sir. are uh, doesn't show much. Apart from that, there is some fracture line seen there. Yes, sir. Okay. And yes. these are the subsequent x-rays which were just before the presentation to our hospital. So the, that is a fracture fragment seen there. It seems to have moved or displaced more than the earlier one. And that was the x-ray yes, we sir. got done. Yes, sir. So, yes. How would you like to manage this patient now? Five months. Sir, I will, I will ma manage it conservatively. What is because 12 weeks has passed, sir. If I will try to open it, then there is a chance of AVM, sir. Okay. So, so what in conservative? Yes, sir. What in conservative management? You talked you? about fixation in situ. Do you think that is this is suitable for that? No, sir. Fracture is combinated, sir. I can't fix. Combinated. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Hello. Do you get a comminuted lateral epicondyle fracture? A lateral condyle fracture. Yes, sir. So I will open. Yeah, I will do an arthrogram, sir, so to, to see the arti uh, congruity, articular congruity, sir. You just said you will manage conservatively. Now you want to do an arthrogram. No, sir. In general case, if I will get a comminuted fracture, fresh comminuted fracture of Lateral epicondyle. Hang on, hang on. We're talking about this case. Five-month-old injury. Some restriction of motion. 
he has presented to you. But... Sir, I will manage this conservatively. What do you mean by conservative money? When you say you will manage it mm. conservatively, you are going to advise something to the patient, aren't you? Or the parents? Amit? Or are you going to just tell them conservative management? Amit, you have muted. Okay. So what, does, what does conservative management mean here? Management mean here? I will only call the, only counsel the patient party that the if I will do any a, a operative treatment in he, a, here that it made it, it will make the case worse. Okay. So. And so, you will give them some exercise or? Yes, sir. I will give some exercise, sir. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Do you want to go to what you? Does anyone have any other opinion among the DNB post uh, postgraduates, etc.? Sudanshu and other people. Anyone, any other Push, opinion? Yeah, Pushpinder is also there. Sorry, sir, no, sir. Okay. So at five months, this has gone not to unite, okay, in non-union. And still, yes. if you don't want to do anything, this will not unite, right? So how can you just leave it? One. Second is, there are implications of leaving them, not uh, doing something. Because uh, we'll see in the subsequent cases that... Uh, delayed presentation might come with deformities or some other one or other uh, complications. So in this patient, we went ahead, we needed to fix it. But before that, uh, we should have a plan whether to, you know, kind of, uh, as I said, in situ fixation or an open reduction. So this did look like as if the fragment was not very much in position, it might need an open reduction one. So with that plan, we would move ahead. But still what we did is in this patient, we'd put a dye as Amil said. And then we saw that we felt that there was still a congruence which was seen at the fragment. And then as in the first case, this was a, a, a forceps. We tried to push it again, kind of compress it just with a, a mini open reduction, not the opening the fragment as such. And then uh, subsequently putting two screws and that was after the fixation. And then again, the dye was put and see how well the joint is still congruent there. And then this is immediate post-op X-ray. And that is the follow-up at six months. I think we have a longer follow-up offer. Uh, not in this patient, sir. Yeah. So I think... Uh... Again, this is again a fixation in situ. This is not an open reduction. Right. You're not going to get any reduction by just pushing on it because we've done a lot of open reductions in the past. If you do an open reduction, you really need to get the articular surface aligned. So this would also come under fixation in situ. You can see it's percutaneous. Okay. Right. Not done yes. in incisions, etc. So just two little stab incisions that we put in the screws. Okay. We, we, now that we have these small screws, it's easier to put in screws. When we had the, or the smallest we used to have is 3.5, then we would sometimes be worried about putting screws in small children. Okay, so but with these 2.4 millimeter screws, we can e even use them in relatively young children. Okay. Right. So, and any uh, doubts or any questions till here, Sudanshu and other people? Any other PNDs? I think this is an interact interactive session. If you don't ask, then there is no use. You will not get the point what we are discussing here. Sir, in this case, if we, if uh, there is there was no article contiguity, would you have opened it, sir? Open or not? So personally, oh, 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 oh. If you look at this. You got. Uh, you may may have. So when you open them up, you will find some step. Okay, but they fill in with fibrous tissue. Okay, so I don't think uh, if you have to decide whether you want to do in situ fixation or open reduction and internal fixation. If you do an arthrogram, you don't just see the articular surface, you see the overall uh, congruity in terms of there will there'll be fibrous tissue in between the fracture sites. Okay, so you're not seeing the exact articular surface always with the arthrogram when they're late. Okay. 
So I think you have to make a decision based on your x-rays as to whether you're going to treat them with in situ fixation or you're going to do open reduction and internal fixation. Or the other things which you might do depending on how late they present and what problems they present with. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, so it's it's always open, sir. It's not percutaneous if it is non-union, right? Sir? No, no, these are all fixation in situ. They are percutaneous. This is a new concept which has come out in the last few years. I think 10 years ago, we would be opening them and doing a op formal open reduction. But this fixation in situ has come up recently in the last few years. And now there have been a number of papers showing that it works well. The important thing is to get the elbow stable. Because once you fix the thing, the lateral condyle forms and range of motion generally comes about gradually. Okay, So whatever articular cartilage gap is there gets filled with fibrocartilage over a long term. And children have this ability to get back their motion. Right. So we'll move to the next third case. So um, our next PG, whoever is there for him. Uh, this is a six year old. Is there, yeah. yeah. So Pushpinder will take this question. So six year old male, uh, an injury to the right side with again some uh, stiffness with no pain, no instability. No complaints of ulnar nerve, paresthesias or deformity, but there was a delay of seven months at presentation to us. So you can see the fragment kind of completely displaced and maybe rotated also. So Pushpinder, you are there? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. What would you like to do here? Uh, sir, uh, fracture is displaced. We need to fix that uh, fragment uh, by open reduction and fixation with uh, some screw or K wires. So you'll do oh, this at six months? Sir is asking whether you'll do this at six months. Sir, I don't know. No, it's because delay is seven months. Okay, no. So now, yes, sir. do you can it in situ fixation? That's the so this is a completely uh, related fragment. So you will not do an in-situ fixation anyway. No, sir. The question is whether you will do anything at all or just allow the child to develop a range of motion normally and then allow the non-union to carry on and deal with any problems he might have later. Uh, sir, um, a myositis or significance may be possible because the stiffness is al already uh, settled on 10 so to 70 degrees already. And when also. go for the open reduction? For open reduction? Uh, sir, maybe, um, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Did you say you will get myositis sir, I, I, I if you do open reduction or if you don't do open reduction? Sir, I in this case need to open uh, go with open reduction and fixation with the screw or K wire. And for this patient, sir, uh, range of motion already stiff and decreased. And uh, if further uh, physiotherapy is advised, then go for the uh, further uh, progressive stiffness. And uh, so if you see this in the exam, you're going to fail. Okay, sir. The reason is that the literature is still in favor of not doing anything at this stage. Okay. And if you do anything, okay. then you have all the risks of AVN, stiffness, uh, uh, heterotopic ossification, etc. Okay, so these are not to be. If you are asking me, these are not fair cases for you people to answer. Uh, we might do something based on our experience, but that is not yet uh, borne out by literature. Okay. Yes, you understand. So for for you for your exam stage at this stage, seven months. If you look at any of your textbooks, it will say do not do anything. Deal with the problem as it comes. Okay. The Jason. problem why the problem why <laughs> sir is saying is because uh, kind of there, there are some problems of doing the surgery here. One is you might lose the movement after the surgery, and second is uh, there is a possibility that you try to uh, put it back while dissecting and all into position, it might lose whatever blood supply it has and it will go for AVN. Sir, 
uh, for us it, more than 12 weeks we 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 don't have to do anything na sir for so us or for you, for your no hang on so if it's a undisplaced fracture it's a different thing altogether okay yes sir. displaced fracture for a non union today you would you can do a fixation mm -hmm. you, okay yes sir you can get uh, non unions even with minimally displaced fractures with true undisplaced fractures you will not get a non union okay yes sir the song one and two they will go on to heal with conservative treatment okay yes sir the one that may displace once you come to four and five then obviously you will get non union five is rotated so rotated you can't fix in situ okay yes sir because when you actually open them you will find that the articular surface is facing the opposite side yes sir now by and large by literature if you look at it even after 6 weeks uh, if you look at the early literature they would suggest not to do anything probably yes, say the cut off would be about 3 months yes sir yes Having sir that the reason for that is earlier on the results of doing it later really good results but that is not yet a Sort of, we haven't written it up. It hasn't yet uh, come in uh, literature about. There have been isolated case reports, etc. But it is not yet something that anyone would try. Anyone should try and do. So for you guys, the treatment should be what is the standard treatment, not necessarily what we do in this particular case. Okay. Okay, sir. So, sir, okay. for this case, uh, for initial three months, or if it is a fresh fracture, or for initial three months. If present present, then it should be open reduction internal fixation. Yeah, I think between six weeks and three months is a gray area. Okay. Sir. Less than six weeks, definitely open reduction and internal fixation. Between six <coughs> weeks and three months is a gray area, and after three months, I don't think in the exam you should answer open reduction and internal fixation. Okay. And in six to twelve months, six to twelve weeks, we will give what will give what will our answer, sir? Non conservative, sir. Six to twelve weeks. I, what did I say? You did not understand. I said that's a gray area. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can uh, decide. Say whatever. Uh, today, I think the consensus is going towards doing them, doing open reduction and internal fixation. But what you can say is, you can say that in the literature there is not enough evidence to show that this is a good method of treatment, and they. are certain complications so i would so if you ask this question you you should say that i would refer it to a senior colleague okay sir the reasons why okay ji yes, sir thank you ji yes, sir right. so uh, sir yeah sure carry on yeah so in this patient what we did is uh, uh, again uh, not quoting the literature not exactly following that but the because the fragment was kind of uh, displaced and rotated so we planned for an open reduction with a gentle dissection and this is what we did so that was intra op range of movement some 10 to 70 degrees that was our mass excuse me sir we, sir on x ray basis if you can explain that one which side is articular surface in the last slide sir so it will be very useful for the post graduate so articular surface you can see yes. but it's rotated you can't see okay yeah So maybe from the pictures, next uh, video you'll understand you'll a little more. See it in in real life, okay? That's easier. So if you look at this X-ray, it's pointing to the back, okay? Yes. Which is normally should be pointing to the front. Yeah. Yes. So that was intra-op range of movement. We wanted to uh, open <coughs> reduce it. In the anesthesia also, you can see that flexion is restricted to about seventy degrees. Yeah. so that is our incision and with a very gentle uh, uh, dissection this is through the lateral uh, condylar ridge we are dissecting through that will cut the fascia will go between the muscles and we are gently elevating the soft tissue and try to preserve as much of the posterior soft tissue um, uh, hinge or whatever blood supply to the fragment and then gently once that is seen the once a fragment is seen we kind of break open it and see suddenly it pops out with a intact see the articular push. surface is facing out okay and this whole thing has to be rotated 
and then put back into place. Okay? And for that, you need to release the muscular attachment to the fragment, which is the epicond uh, the muscles attached, the extensor muscles of the forearm, yeah? And the wrist. And once that is done, this is like fragment is uh, being dissected out. And in the next, so whatever is the muck or the soft tissue, as Sir said, there will be fibrous tissue found there. Once that is removed, we'll start seeing the other part of the, the other end of the fracture, the joint. So now when the fracture is tried to push back into place and we can see that. So it is kind of reducing to the other end of the joint. You can see that. So that is an it, open reduction. Interiorly, the articular surface is reduced. When you put and that is, yeah, that is a reduction seen again in that picture. And then it is kind of fixed with whatever our preference screws and wires. So always try to preserve a good amount of posterior soft tissue hinge cuff so that it doesn't go for a AVN. So that is the fixation and that is the Range, range of on the table, okay? Right. That may not be maintained afterwards. You have to see. Do we have a follow up on this? Yeah, yes, sir. So that is a, uh, those are the immediate x rays, subsequent x rays at around uh, three months, three and a half months, and that is one year follow when the patient implant removal was also done. So complete range of movement as such in this patient. So any questions still there? Like they say, one swallow doesn't make a summer, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. So I think sir has explained that one uh, about that uh, uh, because the vascularity is from the posterior side. So the chances of avian is more if we can. So this is disappear. a trait because there are some people who feel that approaching it posteriorly is easier. Uh, I think there is I, that's what I, I don't think at their stage they should go into these controversies because there's argument among the experts about what approach to use. Okay. So we use the okay. lateral approach, but there are people who prefer the posterior approach and claim it's much better. So up to them. So the message, uh, the conclusion from this case was that there is always a gray area after three months. One has to be uh, kind of uh, very skilled and has done a couple of cases and very good dissection has to be done to preserve the soft tissue hinge and if the one has planned to attempt but not always that should be done so we'll move to the next case now so this is a uh, 10 year old female who presented so now already had 35 minutes huh? so Okay, sir. sir. Okay, right. So, uh, this patient had presented at two years after the initial injury, and uh, the main complaint uh, she has some kind of uh, uh, deformity that is cubitus valgus on the left side, and at the same time, she has instability. So, that is a fragment which is seen there that is a big fragment, and it has kind of moved superiorly, proximally. So, that is the instability she has on examination. To show the postgraduates as what is the instability and uh, may I move ahead as what was done sir Pardon? Yeah, any any um, comments ask them for one one of them can answer how they any any comments from postgraduates whoever is the next as what he would like to do in this patient now I think uh, yeah Adish Adish and uh... Rajan I think Janki, uh, Adish will be too early to answer this. Okay. Uh, then, okay. What What would you like to do, Janki, in this patient? That for this one, after freshening, maybe a bone with a bone graft, we can fix it because it's already two year delay and uh, it is quite high. Although there is chance of uh, maybe deformity. Uh, so the, the the concerns here is one is deformity and the deformity second is, and the, yeah. yeah and the second is instability okay yeah and because third, of that one I I want the, to the issue yes. is the movement in this patient is quite good if you see almost complete movement so the problems with the surgery in these patients or delayed presentation is once we try try to do something especially if kind of reduce the fragment to the joint kind of articular surface it might lead to loss of movement so that is always a concern. 
and uh, share anything more someone from the chat yeah. who answered that media loss sir okay sir a uh, supra kondala osteotomy sir okay so where would tardy you tardy on may they not tardy on palsy sir so no so it is not us tardy so you could get tardy ulnar palsy if the deformity is left uncorrected okay yes sir yeah so yes, yes so sir. you want to do a medial osteotomy but you can do a medial osteotomy will be a closing wedge but then you can't address the non union through that approach okay yes sir so you have to choose between and in this case instability is a problem so in concern yes. with the instability also. okay yes sir So there are two ways you can correct the deformity. One is with the medial osteotomy. Second is through the if through the fracture. Okay. Yes, sir. So which means so opening out the fracture. Sure. Putting a wedge of tricortical bone graft, and then fixing it. Okay. So that is what was done in this patient. The fragment was like kind of cleared up. A uh, bone graft was put there, fixed initially with a screw. and then over that a plate and that those are the post op x rays so we don't always put a plate i mean we've fixed some of these with just screws this was an older child and uh, we because we were trying to also correct the deformity and we had to actually release the joint to a little bit to get so one of the things you need to watch out with these is when you fix the fracture it may give you instability because it may give you stiffness because some of the movement in these chronic non unions actually take place through the fracture okay so that's something you need to watch out and i think you had shown one reference about in your initial slide about someone doing a sort of cm studies of movement in these non unions sir yeah. slide there you had a reference did you look into that reference i'm not sure now sir i think just check the slide may i go back and check now okay yeah. so this was a two years follow up for this patient and uh, we can see that uh, there is some loss of movement there was a little 20 degree more flexion possible post op but uh, her instability had co completely corrected after the surgery and the deformity is also corrected okay so so almost similar case we will not discuss here so uh, uh, this is a, a larger fragment almost the similar pattern going more medially the fracture and this was a she presented with a delay of one year she is six years she also had instability on examination and that is a kind of tricortical triangular graft we inserted it and as sir said we had put three screws here and that is a intra op range of movement those are the three screws that screw is holding that is a graft and that is a fragment here and that is two years follow up of this patient again almost complete range of movement yeah, okay so the motion i don't think that's almost complete it's <laughs> it's complete one yeah so i'm uh, moving ahead to the next patient so this patient had uh, she is uh, 12 years old and she had presented with a, an operated case of non union and with these two uh, some flimsy holding wires not very well uh, fixation is not good and she presents with a uh, stiffness and uh, of course there is a scar and probably there is because there is not good movement with a deformity also uh, cubitus valgus and because this is again a little more uh, kind of difficult so in this case i'll just move ahead without any discussion is because we can see here the fragment seems yeah. to be kind of enlarged and going out it is not completely maybe there is some extra bone yeah. formed there yeah. so in this patient we took out those wires that been taken out and to reduce the fragment uh, back to its position but not completely yeah. the reduce the joint we had to take out the extra bone so uh, reduction osteotomy was done and then it was fixed with screws and then plates sir yeah so this is again so not uh, really uh, so here we had to do an arthrolysis as well because the joint was still stiff to release all the joints get this fragment back in position uh, because it was not just enlarged it was also uh, not in position so we ended up having to reduce this fragment which, which means 
taking off a bit of the fragment so that it could be contained in the joint. Otherwise, it was sticking out. You saw the lump that was sticking out. So we right. did that and then fixed it. And uh, well, but these are difficult situations where one has to really uh, explain things to the patient. Uh, look at what problems they are having because it's not it, unless they have a significant problem, you should not be doing this surgery because they could end up with stiffness after surgery. Okay, yeah. so always you have to. Uh, very carefully weigh the risks versus benefits when you're doing surgery like this. So especially in these kind of cases, better not to kind of reduce the joint and get an articular congruity rather than like there was instability. It's better to get uh, some kind of support with the graft than so to... This, yeah, but we were also here also getting... We also got some kind of articular congruity, much more than Sir, yeah. what was there before. But you can't get perfect congruity. Yes, so moving to the next case, this is a six-year-old male. He had presented with a delay of 2.5 years and he has cubitus valgus. See the elbow and again some stiffness and he also had a tardy ulna palsy. So who is the next uh, uh, PG with us? Kindly answer what would you like to do? So that is a fragment. There is kind of uh, move proximally, big bone loss also there. And the main complaint is deformity along with ulna nerve palsy, ulna nerve involvement. So, Pushvinder. Sudanshu. So, mm -hmm. as uh, I think Amil said, okay, uh, Amil, did did you mention about an osteotomy in one of your cases? So that was from Rajan. Rajan. Yeah. yeah. Anyone, if you wish to? I will do, sir. I will do open reduction, sir, uh, and open reduction and bone grafting, and sir, ye ulna nerve transposition. So, what approach? Posterior approach. So you you can do this with one incision. Okay. No, sir. No, I... If you do posterior approach, you're going to do two incisions. No, sir. Uh, one incision. Oh, then why did you say no? So you can do it with one posterior incision or a medial and lateral incision, okay? If you're planning to do what you did, okay? Yes, sir. So in this case, the main complaint was like the patient had deformity and along with ulna nerve involvement. So for deformity in this, particularly in these kind of cases, try not to do something again for fixation of the fragment. Uh, though we'll show what we did. Uh, the deformity can be corrected by uh, osteotomy. So supracondylar medial uh, closing wedge osteotomies. For ulna nerve, we'll do an anterior, uh, the neurolysis and anterior transposition of ulna nerve. So that would be our plan. Okay. So for this patient, we did a medial close wedge supracondylar osteotomy. We did uh, try to fix the lateral fragment uh, with a K wire along with a bone graft, and for the ulna nerve release and tra anterior transposition was done. That was sorry. Yeah, that is the follow up. This patient at two years. Uh, the X ray they don't look very well, but the function has uh, improved a lot, and the ulna nerve symptoms has also been corrected. When did this patient come last? This was in 2020. I did not see myself, sir. Okay. He, he so didn't come. He hasn't me. come after that. We should get him back for a right. follow-up to see because it will be interesting to see how he does. Because this is... So, again, almost a uh, similar patient uh, to show what we did. Again, this is a big fragment and complaint was uh, deformity, cubitus valgus. Supracondylar medial closing wedge osteotomy was done. So that, going back to the last case, it's sorry. very unusual to get a uh, ulnar nerve palsy at that age. Okay, usually they present later. Okay, yeah. and the mean time between the fracture and the and the ulnar nerve palsy is how much? Couple of years, I would say, sir. 
that no. usually presents in the uh, near after adolescence. So the mean time is around 10 to 15 years, okay? It's right. Right. Very unusual to get it that early. Okay. I don't think around 11 years is the over, over on average. So that's a very unusual case presentation here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, some of the surgeons uh, say for the postgraduates, I'm saying they say that a triple management would be needed in these cases. That is, one is if bone graft is needed, they'll fix it. That is first. And second is supracondylar osteotomy with a medial closing wedge, second. And third is anterior uh, transposition of ulnar nerve. So, that is what I heard in uh, from some of the surgeons. And it is also yeah, mentioned. So, this is, I mean, something that. I'm not sure whether I would do the same thing if this patient came to me again. I might approach it laterally, fix it, and then decide on the ulnar nerve transposition after that. So I would not deal with this. They, there is also a good uh, range of motion, surprisingly. That's yeah, there, there, there is also yeah. an opinion that doing a closing wedge osteotomy might itself uh, uh, improve the ulnar nerve symptoms. So it might not be needed also, sir. But if you're approaching it immediately, then you may as well do it. Right, exactly. exactly. So it doesn't make any sense to me. If you're so, doing it lateral side and correcting it, then it makes sense. Right. right. So this is a last case. Uh, this is around 40 years female and she had an injury in childhood with no complaints other than tardy ulnar nerve palsy. So she had paresthesias. She didn't have any deformity. She didn't have any instability and she didn't have any... Uh, she had complete range of movement. So that was a fragment. Uh, again, non-union. And for like this kind of case, only thing what was done and is needed is a alana renorisis and anterior transposition. Yeah, again, so, this is an, a very unusual case where you have no deformity. You know it's a lateral condyle non-union. There's no problem with the non-union, although it looks displaced. But... She has a tardy ulnar nerve palsy, okay, which came again about 15 years after the original injury. And then it went on to severe clawing, etc. But it's interesting that she actually does not have any. This is the only one we've had without a deformity or without a valgus deformity getting tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Right. So uh, those are all the case uh, uh, interactions, discussions we wanted to have. So this is our data in last 10 years. So we had a total of uh, 17 patients in last 10 years with a dominant of uh, left side more. And uh, there were 10 patients who presented with within one year and uh, seven patients after one year. In those who presented one year, there was an average delay of 3.75 months. No, none of these patients, because of course the presentation was quite early, there was no cubitus valgus in any of them. In situ fixation was done in four, and open reduction and internal fixation was done in six patients. Of those uh, who presented after one year, all of these patients, seven of them had cubitus valgus, though there was stiffness in one of them. Uh, so uh, there is a it is difficult to comment whether that was cubitus valgus or not, but an average delay was 2.3 years. Fixation with, with bone grafting was done in four patients and a supracondylar medial closing wedge osteotomy was done in three patients. So you seem to have left out the one without a deformity. Sir, because she this was I, I was trying to gather all the pediatrics, so that is why I, I didn't take her into it. Her fracture the was in the pediatric age group. No? <laughs> okay, then I'll add that. So uh, this is one of the pa papers which was uh, from Italy last year only. And in this paper, they said that if the patient presented with a displacement less than five months, uh, five millimeters, and even like within three months of injury, they would still manage this patient conservatively, which I, I think we don't follow that. Probably uh, any patient after one month, we would straight away go with either uh, in situ fixation or, a, or an open reduction as needed. Sir, anything to add on that? And then, so this is the last slide. Uh, there you might be some that algorithm. Just can you go back to sir? So it says uh, trade union and non-union. Huh? It's different. If it's less than three months. So it le less than three months. Less he than says five it's millimeters. Yes, sir. But stable condylar fragment. Okay, there's bony bridge on CT. 
they used to get ct in all the patients sir which yeah, we okay. so if you have a bony bridge then maybe this is a right if we haven't been doing cts on them as a rule but if you can see a bony bridge in ct that may be one reason because we have one or two cases where in our practice, where they've gone on to heal although they looked like a displaced displacement at 3 months they've gone on to heal not because we have advised it but they've just come i've got the serial yeah. x-rays of them so this could be a reasonable uh, thing to talk about to uh, to look at right sir so and the rest of the things is almost same like uh, uh, transfer transposition of ulnar nerve and osteotomies whatever we follow and so there might be a controversy in this slide that is the last slide though so the recommendation as usually what we follow is uh, less than 5 mm displace less than 3 months we usually if it is undisplaced we will go for an in situ fixation a displace and rotated which uh, as sir was saying if there is a gray area between uh, 6 to 12 weeks it depends on the surgeon's uh, choice and his skill whether to open reduce and fix it or not but if possible one can try for it and then after one year so, most so this is again uh, something which uh, you have to be a bit careful about i think for us after 3 months is the gray area but between 12 weeks to 3 months as yet in the literature there is not enough evidence yeah. to say that you should go ahead and fix all of them okay right and after one year if uh, there is an instability like most of these patients present usually uh, and after a year or more we can do a strut graft fixation and without it and attempt to exactly reduce the joint so as to preserve whatever movement was there uh, if there is a cubitus valgus deformity uh, we can do a closing uh, medial closing wedge osteotomy and for an ulna uh, palsy or radial ulna we'll do an anterior transposition of ulna so that's it sir so well, only one other uh, problem that they will sometimes come with and that is stiffness okay, unusual but we've seen one or two where they come with stiff elbows usually following massages and things like that and then it's a different thing altogether you may consider doing an arthrolysis so sir the for the first one for post postgraduate it may be uh, if it is less than 5 Millimeter displacement, uh, it may be conservative or in situ fixation. That is one change. Other than that, I think everything is uh, recommended. No, but that should not be done without a bony bridge on the CT. So that's a new. When was that article? Last year, two thousand twenty-one. So it's a recent in Italian. Yes. That so, is, in fact, only article which kind of gives all the al algorithm. yeah that's something that you should think about because that one case which has i remember very clearly where if i had seen that patient at 3 months i would have definitely advised fixation and he came back he actually presented almost a year later with a united factor he didn't see me earlier which is probably good for him <laughs> yeah. so any more questions or any more confusion from the i think we had lot of discussion through the cases on yeah so i think, so I think should, if it... uh, so uh i think uh, for the post graduates the two or three things to know one is very early which would be for the displaced rotated up to 6 weeks for sure and maybe up to 3 months you would consider open reduction and internal fixation for undisplaced or minimally displaced fractures if they are going into delayed union or non union then you have to think of fixation if they come after a year then you need to look at what problems they are having and only then deal with it so if they have instability then you would fix the fracture if they have tardy ulnar nerve palsy then you have to deal with that and if there's deformity you have to deal with that now you can deal th with the deformity to the fracture by correcting the de uh, deformity at the fracture and putting a bone graft or you can do it with an osteotomy again you can do a lateral opening wedge or a medial closing wedge osteotomy depending on what you feel is more appropriate in that case 
again for tardy <clears throat> ulnar nerve palsy, I think arthrolysis, uh, sort of neurolysis and anterior transposition. And if it's along with a deformity, it would depend on the patient's uh, desire or uh, whether he wants correction of the deformity. So if you have someone who's not bothered about the deformity, just do a transposition and neurolysis. If they want deformity correction, then you can combine that. Approaches, sir. Approaches. If you're doing an ulnar nerve transposition and uh, osteotomy, I would go medial. Okay. Yes, sir. If you have to yes, deal sir. with both medial and lateral side, one op option would be to go posterior. Okay. And then you have to be careful about your dissection. Yes, sir. So, yes. when will you fix between three months to one year, sir? So, for us, we do it now. If it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, I, you, the literature is not clear on it. So, when you, when if a PG goes and says it in the exam, he might even fail on that. So, he has to be careful about that. Okay. So, I think you need to warn them about it just because we do it. Doesn't mean it's as yet an accepted method of treatment all over the world. Okay, so if you look at textbooks, they do not. So the PGs have to go more by the textbooks than individual uh, sort of centers where they may be doing something. Okay, they should be aware of it and say that yes. Recently, there has been uh, articles which suggest fixation can be done la later, but it is not yet something that is widely accepted. Okay. Right. I think more and more people are going towards fixing these, but five years ago, no one was fixing them. So, or 10 years ago, very few were. So, they can quote that your last article, what you have shown, sir. And one more thing, uh, usually for postgraduate, that uh, for non-union to say, like, like nine-month criteria, it is not fit for this one. Usually, they used to mistake in the exam. So, this is a three month criteria to say it, not even for lateral condylis. Yeah, so I think there are fractures for which, like the neck femur fracture, we do not talk about nine months, okay? Yeah. Those are that nine month criteria is mostly for diaphyseal fractures. Yes, okay. yes sir. Yes. I think if anyone have any other question or any doubt, then you can ask right now. Otherwise, okay. any more questions? Else, we'll close the session. Yeah. Oh, sir, no question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank week. you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.